Well, it's not gonna be a very long one today, but what I thought I would share with you is this. It's just arrived from the United States of America, and it may well have a serious application on one of my future expeditions up in the Arctic. Electricity is a precious resource on any unsupported endeavor to the middle of nowhere. And in the months either side of the midsummer, high latitudes don't offer much in the way of solar charging potential, even when the sun does deign to rise. But the polar regions frequently have a lot of this. So I thought, why not make use of it? The difficulty is that small wind turbines are either, let's be honest, toys, or designed for use on boats, which means that they can casually make use of heavy steel and glass fiber in their construction. Neither are any good for me. I did try Rutland's smallest turbine last winter in Alaska, but it weighed three kilos, and that's before you even consider cables and charge controllers. It's beautifully made, and it costs as much as you'd expect, but I'm reserving it for boat use. I came across this, the Cutting Edge 2022 Micro Wind Turbine. Not alone in the category of startup companies making all manner of renewable energy products, but it was the only one that, on paper at least, ticked my boxes well under a kilogram, able to charge at 12 volts and not just at USB, weather sealed, with a reasonable output, and cutting in at low-ish wind speeds. It's apparently assembled in the USA, although where the motor and USB rig is made, I don't know, but part assembled in the USA at least. Because after it arrived, a month delayed on top of the already very long production lead time, in a woefully unpadded box it also has to be said, there's still plenty of assembly to do. You get a variety of options in the kit, a two blade and a five blade setup with a hub for each. For the power output, there's a straight 12 volt DC cable with outdoor connectors, although it's not regulated, so it will vary with wind speed and smaller batteries are going to need a charge controller to tame the mighty up to 15 watts that the turbine outputs. The USB output is more like what most other portable turbines offer, a five volt inline regulator and a couple of USB sockets. They include a tiny plug-in USB LED light, which I presume is there to help during setup to see if you have a functional current flowing or not. Then we move to the housing. Cutting Edge also supply bare components, but I gather that my kit version includes a motor slash generator, a bracket to fit the hub to, a blocking diode, and some cables and glands. There are various screws, threads, and nuts employed throughout the design, and no spares are supplied, so if you want some and can't guess the sizes, you'll need to deal with a slow and less than friendly customer service. The listing claims full IP68 weather protection, which means it should be able to go underwater. I'm dubious. The cable gland is just of the normal twist close variety, which rarely gives a truly submersible seal, and the motor shaft doesn't suggest a full waterproof seal either. The housing does include O-rings at the interfaces where it's screwed together though. The housing, hubs and blades are evidently 3D printed, and the somewhat disjointed and incomplete approach to online manuals and diagrams doesn't explain what type of plastic is used. This means we don't know what conditions they'll withstand, from the weather, chemicals, temperature and so on. The finish is rough, to say the least. I've set up the five blade configuration as it's likely to offer the best performance, albeit heavier, and the rough and ready finish continues. Each blade is held on with a pair of set screws, and the documentation refers spuriously to some areas being press fit, confusingly alluding perhaps to a change in design in the past, and now clumsily trying to cover the old and the new versions at once. The hub and blades being mated with the motor shaft bracket presented the first of the two major issues I found, and that I'll have to try and mitigate. To me it suggests the company is better on electrics, batteries and so on, than with mechanical design. There are four threads. I've now finally been told that they are UNC 440 size and four tiny nuts. No washers, no locking nuts. Given how the company online gets very exercised about how dangerous loose spinning blades can be, it's just extraordinary that they consider this adequate. They are relying on a few turns of a bare nut tightened directly into roughly printed plastic. Loosening under vibration is all but a certainty. I'm going to make a single, thin, stainless steel plate to span all five holes and so spread out the clamping pressure and buy locking nuts plus spares. You could use liquid thread locker or a blob of sealant too, I suppose. As reviews other than mine have already mentioned, instead of a proper tool, they've gone a little crazy on the 3D printing and included a plastic tool to tighten the little nuts. It's far too imprecise and soft for the job and it's madness to rely upon it. 
Anyhow, since wind tends to be attenuated and very dirty in built up central London, I took the assembled rig on a pole of the correct size I found to Alan's boatyard to test. Note that this turbine doesn't automatically rotate into the wind and there's no vane or tail. For my purposes this is okay as I'm planning to mount two side by side and then add my own vane and rotating assembly. The turbine span up in 10 or 12 mile an hour winds pretty easily. In lower wind speeds down to 5 miles per hour you'll probably need to give it a tap to help it start. Once I was clear that my turbine was a blade into the wind design and not a downwind design, the website doesn't make this clear but does state that the similar but different cyclone model is indeed downwind and so adds to the uncertainty. Other reviewers have mentioned that they've put on blades the wrong way around and I ended up having to study photos to be sure as I could that I was doing it right. I switched on the USB unit and got a reassuring light from the little LED device which remained on consistently and without flickering. At this point though, the most heinous issue emerged and with no lack of drama. Vibration. The head was flinging itself around on the end of the pole and continued even when I was trying to hold it as firmly as I could just beneath the unit itself. This isn't right and will sooner or later damage itself, its mounts and anything able to loosen. This is only one third of the turbine's maximum rated wind speed. I investigated. The motor shaft is a little play fore and aft but it seems solid laterally, so it's not that. Later I took off the blades and used this not at all suspicious looking high precision weighing scale. Most of the blades were of similar weight, but others were more than 10% lighter. This must be the cause, and it's unforgivable for these tolerances to pass the company's quality control. Compare it to the Rutland, which spins with perfect smoothness and balance. My guess is that they have such an order backlog that they are rushing production but still happy to take people's money. Or this 3D printing tech isn't appropriate for blade manufacturing. Although I don't know exactly where the missing weight should be located along the length of the blade, I'll use some epoxy resin to get the blades to a consistent weight and see if it helps. Customer service was as helpful as expected. So, the turbine fits a useful space in the marketplace and luckily for cutting edge there's no direct competition at this size, spec and price point. But to really instill confidence they, one, need to sort out their production and how they own up to and relay issues to customers. Two, completely overhaul their customer service as at present they just ignore emails they can't be bothered to answer and when they do reply they're very huffy. Three, someone needs to take down all the incomplete, reactively written online guides and PDF and write a proper user guide. And four, they need to get a mechanical design consultant to deal with some of the rather amateurish assembly decisions. I am going to persevere but you see my reservations.